What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to Unity Addressables. I'm going to show you how to install it through the Package Manager, how we can configure some of the assets that I already have in the project with the Addressable system, and basically get everything ready so that you can interact with it via script. By the end of this video, you should be able to interact with it. And then on the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up everything so we can access our assets from the cloud. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing, which is to use addressables, obviously, for the scene. So I use the standard assets that Unity provides. So what I want to do for this video is I want to instantiate the armature that you see here so we can, you know, we can walk around and Instead of getting that automatically from the inspector, we're going to be instantiating that from our addressables. The other thing that I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be placing um, basically a logo. Let me pause this. A logo right here, which is going to be the Unity logo. So if you look at the Unity logo right now, it hasn't been loaded. And I also have a couple armature materials that we're going to be changing. So if I wanted to change the say in a new version of this game, we wanted to change it to a different color, then you know we can do that without actually having to do a build. We're going to go ahead and open up the package manager and you can search for addressable. And I'm going to be using the latest version. Also, the version of Unity that I'm using is 2021.1.1f1. And then this is going to be what I'm going to be using for addressables. Click on install. Okay, so it looks like this is ready to go. So the first thing that I normally do when I'm using addressables, I bring the, the groups window. And to do that, we're going to go to Windows, Access Management, and then Groups. And then it's going to be opening up this window here. It's going to tell you that you need to create a settings, addressable settings. So I'm going to click on that. And then normally it just gives you this default local group. And when you want to think about groups, groups are basically attached to, I, I could see it as a level. So all the packages for a level are going to be attached for a group. So think about doing and separating you know, the levels that way. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new package asset, which is going to be a group. And then this one we can say this is going to be the playground level, which is basically the name of this scene is called playground. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And actually, we need to make this one a default first. And then we can delete this other one here. I'm going to be removing that. And as soon as you do that, you're going to get a couple of settings in here, scriptable object settings. And you're going to see that this, for now, is using the local build path. And this is where this is going to be building this, which is at the end, is going to be an asset bundle. And then also, where is it loading it from? And then if you click on advanced options, it's going to give you a lot, a lot of different options that we'll go over. And then you want to make sure that you change this update restriction. Make sure that it's set to can change post release because we want to make sure that we change this you know, after we, we do a build because that's the beauty of using addressables. OK, so once you do that, what I want to do is I want to look at the, the player armature, which is going to be the one that we're going to be adding dynamically. And I'm actually going to delete it from here. And I want you to drag it and drop it into the group that we just created. And as soon as you do that, you're going to see that it adds that line with an addressable name and also a path and a label if you wanted to use a label, which I'm not going to be covering just today. The other thing that we can also look at, if you drag it and drop it here, because we're going to need another. If you look at the, I think it's a geometry and then expand the amateur mesh. Then I'm going to go ahead and right click on select material. We're going to be grabbing these three materials because I'm going to be changing them as well after I do a build so you guys can see the changes. And then the other thing that I also want to do, if you go to audio, I also have an audio file here. If I double click on it that I want to play after the, you know, the game loads. Let's go ahead and double click it. You're going to. So it's going to be more of an action uh, track. But anyway, so as soon as you add it, you're going to get it and it's going to also check it in here. If you look at the assets in here, not only they get added to the addressable groups, but there's also going to be a checkbox to each one of those assets just telling you that that has been added as an addressable. So now we can get rid of this. And so we also have a logo, right? We haven't really added the logo. So we want to go into textures and then add it in here. So just make sure that you add everything and you think about what things might be changing in your level that you want to change without actually creating a bill. And this is what I did here. I want to make sure that I add my, you know, my actual armature, which is going to be my player controller. I want to make sure that I add my logo because I may want to change that logo later without actually having to do a bill. And I also want to do music, right? Because we want to, we, we also want to change the music perhaps. And also the materials that are associated with that character controller. 
Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to need to create a new script. And to do that, I'm going to go into the scripts folder and then create, and we're going to be creating just a C sharp script. I'm going to call it addressables manager, and you can call this anything you like. That's basically what's going to be controlling the assets that we're going to be loading. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'll just go ahead and right click in here, create empty, and we can just do also addressables manager. And I'll go ahead and drag and drop this script to this and then double click to open it. And yeah, let's go ahead and reload it. So now that we have the addressable system, basically, you know, the assets associated with the addressable groups, now we need to have a way of actually loading those, right? We need to tell the, the Unity engine that we want to load those assets. And that doesn't really happen magically. You have to do some code to do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I'm adding the, the player armature, which is going to be the first one. So I'm going to make a serializable field. And that serializable field is going to be a private. And that one I'm going to make it, it's going to be an asset reference. And basically anything that you add as an asset that needs to be loaded to the addressable system is going to be an asset reference or basically a derivative of, that, of an asset reference. And I'm going to show you what that means. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say player armature, and then this is going to be as a reference. Perfect. And then the other ones that I'm going to be adding, we also need to add the music, right? And I'm going to show you why the music is going to be changing here. I'm just going to say as a reference. And for the music, instead of doing it like this, I'm actually going to create a new type, which is going to allow us to filter that type. So I'm going to say as a reference, and then I'm just going to call an audio clip. And honestly, there wasn't a lot of documentation on this, but uh, you know, I looked through some of the documentation that they had in their code to be able to find this. So we can just basically create a, or on a asset reference, which is going to allow us to pass in a type. And then here you can do something like public and then the constructor, which is going to be the audio clip. And then every one of these that you create on your own, you need to be basically passing a GUI and that GUI is going to go to the base. The base is going to be this type, and that's basically going to handle everything everything for you. I'll just show you how this works. So once we do that, we also need to make this serializable. Serializable, not a serializable field, a serializable object, because we're going to be basically associating an audio clip with this. So instead of using the asset reference, I'm just going to do the, the asset reference audio clip. And I'll show you how that it's going to look. The other thing that I also want to do is I want to also load the, the texture. Remember, we have a an actual logo, which is the Unity logo. And that one, we already have a couple of pretty fine. If we go in here and you look at, there's an asset reference texture 2D. And if we do that, you can do Unity logo asset reference. And make sure that you type that correctly. There we go. And if you go into here, I want to show you how the other one looks like. It's basically what we just did with the audio clip. I just implemented my own because I didn't see that they had one for audio clips, so I just created my own in there. Okay, so now that you have that, we're going to need to also make this realizable. And then I think that's going to be the, the, the only objects that I'm going to be loading from the addressable system. The other thing that I'm also going to need is, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a raw image because that's going to be the placeholder for the Unity logo. It's going to be raw image Unity logo. And I'll just call this one UI component component just in case if I need another one and then we can bring in the the name spacing here and the other thing that I'm also going to need is I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to basically add a reference to the the cine machine camera so if we go back in here let's wait until this loads there's also a player follow camera and if you look in here it has a cine machine virtual camera well this is missing the component because I deleted the armature we need to basically set that up in a runtime so what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to need a Cine Machine Virtual Camera. And then I'll just say Cine Machine Virtual Camera. We're also going to need to bring in Cine Machine. This one is going to be also a serializable field. And then that way we can, when we load the player amateur, we're also associating the follow, the follow property to the player amateur route. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So that's basically everything that we need as far as like the components that we're going to need as references. But we also, we also need to make sure that the, the addressable system is initialized. So I'm going to initialize it as sync. If you don't do this, it's going to happen automatically for you. But I want to do it, I want to do it myself because I want to control the lifecycle of these objects. 
And I just happen to be a little bit obsessed with controlling things. So <laughs> I want to make sure that I, I have full control of the of everything. And I'm actually going to remove these big long name spaces. They just, it, it just looks better when they're short. So when this happens, everything that we, for the most part, everything in addressables is going to be asynchronous, meaning that it's, they're going to run in a, in a different thread and it's gonna give us a callback, right? So in here we're saying, okay, when, when the addressable system initializes, when that completes, we're gonna be calling into this method. So in this method is when I'm going to be in, basically initializing some of these scripts. So I want to, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an instance of my armature. And the same thing here, I'm gonna to need to instantiate it. Well, in this one is I'm, is I'm initializing the system. This one is gonna be instantiating the, the actual per, player armature. So, but what I'm gonna do in here, instead of just creating a new, basically a new property, I'm gonna just call this one geo, and then I'll just do a lambda here, and then we'll just do an inline declaration. So what's gonna happen is when the player amateur gets instantiated, we're gonna get the player amateur instance in here as a, as a reference, and then I'm gonna be able to use it in here. The cool thing with doing it this way is I can just say scene machine and then follow, and then go, and in here, I'm just gonna get the, actually I need to get the results. So let me go ahead and do a var. And then we can just say, I just call this one the player controller. I think it's easier for me to remember that. And then I think this component has, we can just do a find. And I think it's called the player armature root. If not, we can go ahead and we can just check it out just to make sure. The, the way that the armature works is you have to associate the root with the, with the follow property on this component. So what I'm going to do to find that out, because I can't remember on the top of my head, is, okay, it's called player camera root. We can just go ahead and delete it. Let's go ahead and go back in here. So we're going to be basically getting the instance of the, you know, the player armature. And then I'm going to be getting the root and associating that with the Cinema Machine virtual camera. So that's basically everything that we need to do in there. In fact, I don't need to do this we can just say that and i think that that will look cleaner so that's going to load the player amateur from the addressable system the other thing that we need to do is i also want to load the the music so that one i don't want to instantiate it because that's a that's basically a reference so what i'm going to do there is i'm going to say you know what i want to load and what i want to load is going to be an audio clip in that audio clip i also want to make sure that when that completes I want to make sure that I create a new audio source and that audio source has that clip as the, you know, as a reference. So I'm gonna do something similar in here. There's also different ways that you can do this and we could have just checked for a property called assets on this object and that would have worked as well. And just make sure that you use the, asyn the asynchronous version, otherwise it's going to complain because the other one is obsolete. Okay, so now that we do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know what, I wanna, I wanna create a new game, a new component on this game object. And that component is going to be the audio source because I'm gonna need an audio source before we, before we actually can play that clip. So I'm just gonna say this is gonna be the audio source. And then I'm just gonna say, you know what, the audio source here, it's going to have this clip associated, which is gonna be this one right here. But remember, this is gonna need to be the result. And then I'm gonna also say a couple properties in here. We can just say this one to false, because I, I want to control that. I want to just say play. And then the other thing that I want to do before we play, I want to make sure that this is a loop because it's gonna be the basically the music for the for the game. So you could do it this way, or you could just refactor this into its own meta. Either way, it'll work. And then now that we have that, I also want to do something similar with the Unity, with the Unity logo is in this case, we can do, I can do it a little bit different so that I can show you the differences. So we can do the low sync again. This one is going to be a different type, right? It's gonna be a texture 2D, because that's going to be the type that we are going to be associating with the, with the raw image. And instead of going here and doing the complete, there's another way that you can do it. So on the update method, what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say, you know what? If the Unity logo as a reference, the actual asset is not, is not null, meaning that it was already loaded. And I was reading some of the documentation from the Unity team, and this is not really recommended, but they still use it. So I'm really confused of why they tell you to use it if it's not recommended. But anyways, I'm gonna use it anyways. And then, yeah, I'll just show you how this works. So what I'm saying here is I'm saying, okay, you know what? If the addressable system already loaded this asset, 
So which means that it's not null. And I already, and I haven't associated the texture, then I'm going to execute it. So this is going to only execute once, only as long as the texture is null and the asset has been loaded. So what we can do in here is I can say, okay, you know what? The texture in here is null, but I'm going to set it to the asset that I just loaded. And the cool thing with this is you can do as, and we can just say that we're going to be loading that texture to D. And then the other thing that I'm going to do as well is I need to get the current, the, the current color of this. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to say color equal current color because the alpha value is set to basically to zero. And then I can just say current color alpha, I'm going to set it to 1.0. That means it's going to be the maximum. It's going to be displayable and, and visible. And then I just say raw image unity logo. And then we can say color is going to be equal to the current color. So two ways of doing it, right? It's going to be one is going to be either we, you know, in basically inject it on the callbacks for the uncompleted event, or we can do it. And not, it's not called uncompleted; it's called completed. Just make sure that I'm mixing JavaScript and other programming languages. And then the other way is you can also do the Unity logo as a reference. Uh, that asset is not null. And make sure that you have another way of preventing these from executing multiple times. Another thing that you can also do is if you want to keep your code clean and basically memory manage, you want to make sure that you release these instances. So there's a couple of methods that you can use to do that. We can do that on the when the on destroy gets executed. And if we go and look at the player armature asset reference, if you were to do release instance, you can also release the instance that basically was spawned by using that asset. And the way that you do that is you can tell it, you know, what the game object is that had that instance. I didn't keep track of it, but in your case, if you wanted to do that just to keep things clean, you can say that this is going to be, you know, the armature, or we can say player controller, player controller game object, or, you know, however you want to call it. And then what you'll do is basically when that gets instantiated, so, which is going to be here, result is you keep track of it, right? And then you can release it. Just make sure that you don't have, you know, memory leaks in your code. And that way we can, you know, we can keep everything clean. So you can do something like that if you wanted to release that and then just keep it clean. The other thing that you can also do is on this image that we loaded into a system, if you wanted to release it as well, you can do that as well. You can say, you know, raw image logo. Well, not the logo itself, but the asset reference. So we can do Unity logo as a reference. And they also have this release instance or this release asset, which is actually going to load, is going to release the, the loaded asset from the system. So there's those two ways that you can do that. I'm not going to do that right now. It's going to be, it's just a prototype. So I think this will work as it is. And we can just go ahead and remove the using statement. So, so that's basically everything that we need to do in there. We can keep this just for now. If we go back into Unity, let's go ahead and take a look at how this works right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play and see if everything is working. And it looks like we had a null exception. And I did this on purpose because I want to make sure that you remember to associate everything. So if we go into the addressable manager, we haven't really told the system where the prefabs and everything is, right? We told the addressables where they were, but the script doesn't know what those assets are. So make sure that you do that. So we're going to go ahead and associate the player amateur asset with the player amateur asset reference. Also, our music, we're going to need that as well. If we go into audio and then associate the track. And then the Unity logo, we're going to need that as well. Go ahead and associate it. And then lastly, it's going to be our Cinemachine virtual camera. Go ahead and do that. And now, if we play, everything should work as expected, unless we mean something else. And let me go ahead and mute the audio. So you know that the audio is working, right? So we can go ahead and, and walk around and everything is working. The camera is following the player. I can rotate and you know everything is working. We are getting an exception. Let me make sure that I know what that exception is and make sure that we know. So we'll click it and then see. I think that, yeah, the exception is we never made this a serializable field. So make sure that you do that because we're going to need to associate it, right? It needs to load it. It needs to know how to set the raw image. So I'm glad that I'm running through errors because if you run through errors, you're going to know where I'm going through. And then we can just go ahead and associate the raw image there. And let me go ahead and I think I wanted to play. I wanted to just hear the music, but it's going to be too loud. So we can just do that. And you can see the Unity logo loaded. And then yeah, everything, everything it's working. And OK, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and do a couple more things. So 
The other thing that I want to do is, if you go in here, I have this logger area. I want to show you the, the life cycle of that, right? So if we go in here and I say logger that instance, and then when you say log info, we can say initializing the addressables. I can do something like that so that you can see how the steps of everything is executing. And then when that completes, it's going to be, when it's initialized, it's going to be, it's going to show you this. So we can say initialize addressables, and then we can say at the end here, and then load the assets, assets. And then lastly, I think we can say this one, we can put it, we can do this here as well. And then we can say that this is, we instantiated, instantiated the player controller. I think it's fine. We'll know, we'll know what that is. And then on this one, we can say that we basically loaded the audio clip. Clip, right? And then lastly, just to make sure, just for sanity's sake, is this one we associated the Unity logo. So and say Unity logo loaded as an asset and associated with raw image, something like that. Okay, so I think that it's going to give us enough information. So if we go back in here, and we go ahead and wait until this loads. Okay, so I think everything is good. Let's go ahead and hit play. Make sure that everything, there we go. So you can see that the first thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and, let me go ahead and pause it. You can see that it, the first thing that happened is we initialize the system, right? We were initializing the system. And then when this callback gets executed, the uncompleted event, you know, we get a callback with the resource locator. And then we basically display initialize addressables. Then we started loading all the different assets that you see in here, including instantiating the player controller, loading the assets for the audio clip, and also loading the texture 2D so that we can actually see the Unity logo. And then, which is what it shows you in here, loaded assets, loaded the audio clip, instantiated the player controller, but they, they're not executing in, in order. So you guys can see loaded assets is the first thing that executed even though this is last. And that's because these are, these are all asynchronous, so that's something to keep in mind. Instantiated player controller, that one came after this one, which is interesting because this, ha this one happened first. But that's basically the beauty of using asynchronous, right? Is things are not executing on the same thread, they're executing on a different thread. The callbacks that you're getting are not in the same order that you, you're actually coding it. And then the last thing is here, it's Unity logo loaded, and that is the last thing because that happened to be the last thing that, you know, that we got, that we got loaded in this case. So. That's basically everything that I wanted to show you as far as like, you know, playing with addressables, how to, you know, create some of these addressable settings, how to associate them in here. There's also other things that I could cover, but I want to keep it simple. On the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, a hosting service so that you can also, you know, push some of these assets to your own hosting platform. And that way you don't have to build every single time. And I'm also going to show you some of the different settings that are available to be able to keep a catalog external to Unity. So thank you very much, guys. If you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments.